Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Sky Factory 2.5. Yes, we're back here on the island over the void. And today we're going to be working on automated awakened draconium. Let's get started. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be finally getting to Automated Awakened Draconium. I I think I've got something that we can use for that. So I've been doing some testing in my creative testing world, and we've got some parts here. You can see it in my project bag here. Now, one thing I need to do, we don't need that phased field generator anymore, so we can probably put that over here and if we ever go back into another rf tools world we can certainly use that again but for now we don't need it clogging the inventory so what we're going to do is grab all of this stuff here and then we've got a couple of spaces left for a couple of things we're going to be working on so first order of business is we need some patterns we've got we've got tnt in the system but we don't have a pattern for it. So we need to make a pattern and that's gonna be just a straight up crafting pattern. Can we bring that up here? Yes, okay, so, all right. That should be good, all right. So, and it should have allow substitutions, yep. And then how about sand? Do we have a pattern for sand? Hopefully we do. We do, okay. And then also gunpowder. Well, we got 241K. We shouldn't be having any issues there. So what we're going to do is put this encoded pattern into our auto crafting system somewhere, preferably not on the same one that is messing with awakened draconium of any form so that we don't have any bottlenecks there. And then the next thing we need to do is make up a pattern. It's going to be a processing pattern for our awakened draconium. So we're going to need one piece of TNT. We've got a fire truck going by just outside. Hopefully that has not come through, but um, we do hope that the first responders get to where they are going quickly and know exactly what they need to do in that situation. It's uh, it's not something to take lightly there, but, um, but yes, uh, we're right on a main street and so we tend to hear those go by um, you know, fairly, uh, fairly frequently. They're, they're certainly doing their job and, uh, hoping, you know, that I don't have to use their services anytime soon. And, uh, so anyway, if you, if you do hear the first responders going by and you think, you know, they really go by a lot. Well, just think of the people that are on the receiving end of their services. Think about them. Um, and they may need they may need your thoughts and prayers at that moment. So just something to keep in mind. That's all. So what we need we need one piece of TNT. Um, we need let's just put that there. We do need a dragon heart, so we can put that there. We need sixteen draconic cores, and we need well we need four uh, charged draconian blocks. So let's see. We're going to blow up the TNT. It's going to awaken the dragon heart. We throw the cores in there. We place the dracon draconian blocks and then we get um, four awakened draconium. That should be good enough. And we're going to take that with us because we're going to build this machine down below. And before we do, let's take a little sleep. So first we're going to build the machine. It is going to be using Steve's factory manager. I've managed to come up with something that will use that. So just something uh, I was able to put together, which is pretty cool. So we come down here, you can see that I've already done a little bit of work. I have punched out a hole in the wither killing box. Hopefully that's not a problem. You know, it's a one wide area. The wither should not be able to get out of that. Hopefully we don't have any issues. If, uh, if we do, then, well, you know what? That reminds me, I need to make a backup of this world because I try to do that before every episode. So let me do that real quick and I'll be right back with you. All right, sorry for that little lapse in my memory for putting this, this episode together. 
hopefully we are good to go from here on out. All right, so what we're going to do is go up a little bit. Um, I don't want to go up too high, but we want to be sufficiently far away that we've got plenty of room to be building this thing. And we're going to put the center of it, how about right here? Okay, so uh, that is going to be, well, we're going to start building on top of that. What we need to do is put a block gate right on top like so. We can then get our angel block back. Okay. And so now what we do is bring in our... Well, we're using reinforced obsidian again, like so. And we're gonna, just going to come all the way around with that. I'm using this because it is an explosion-resistant block which is kind of necessary when you're dealing with what we have to deal with and um, and yeah I just I'd rather be safe than sorry you know especially on on something like this all right so we're going to be going like that and then there is a block that I have left up in the crafting window up top I need to show you that so let's go up there real quick it's going to be helping us in our quest we come over here we're gonna turn to the open blocks mod for this this right here the block placer so it's got an inventory and then you you put something in there and you apply a redstone signal and it's gonna place the block that's in the inventory so right there you can see the recipe it's not very expensive we do have a piston in there so there's a little bit extra of of a step there but overall not too bad and the reason I'm choosing that one instead of like the MFR block placer is that the MFR block placer not only requires a redstone signal, it requires RF. So, so there we go. Um, open blocks was fairly easy, so that's just what we're going to do. And I needed that block next. So where did it go in my inventory? There it is. All right. So we've got the item valve right there in the center. That's going to be putting the, what is it? The heart, dragon heart, and the draconic cores out. And then the block placers are going to be putting out the uh, the draconium, charged draconium. So that's, uh, that's how that's gonna work. And then we'll bring back down our reinforced obsidian and just kind of surround that like so. Okay, and I'm going to need some water as well. You can see slimes that are jumping off. I did happen to build my entire mob farm in a slime chunk. I didn't realize it was a slime chunk at the time, but c'est la vie, c'est la vie. Okay, now this is where it's starting to get fun. We've got this coming around, okay? And then what we need is to get rid of that. And we need a, a block gate. We have that here in an advanced cable cluster. And we're going to set it up like so. And we're just going to right click to make sure that it is um, facing the correct direction. So we'll come out here like this. And then we'll place another one of these block gates. Right click again. And then all the way around like so rinse and repeat we'll do another blockade like that oh no 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 you come back here thank you and we'll come around we'll complete this square and do this and another blockade there we go we should be good to go on that part and then what we need to do is grab an advanced cable cluster with a redstone emitter and we'll put that right there. And the redstone emitter is going to be actually putting a signal into the block placer. So we're going to be controlling that with a Steve's Factory Manager program. But there we go. We've got all of those. And then I think our, our primary entry point for all of the items are going to be over here. So what we need to do is bring in some inventory cable. Hopefully I have enough. If not, we'll have to run back up and grab that. We may not have enough inventory cable. 
Let's see, we got two left. No, we don't have enough. Oh, that is a problem. Let's go up and make some more real quick. And we shouldn't have a problem with the supplies there. Inventory cable. Is that too bad? No, what's uh, what's the hold up? We need hardened glass. Do we have hardened glass as a recipe? What's this? Yeah, there we go. Um, you know, we'll just do, we'll do that. So that'll get a few, few possibilities, or a few, few different blocks of it. And inventory cable. Okay, that should be sufficient. 32. I hope that's enough. And we'll come down there. Back to where we were. Oh, yeah, it's a mob farm. Okay. Dispatch these guys real quick. Okay, so we'll make sure to put down torches, shall we? Yep, I think that might be good. And then eventually we'll have water in here as well. I don't have a bucket on me. We might have a bucket or two in here. Let's see. Oh, I got a water tank. Easy enough. Okay, we'll come back to that. But what we need to do is build up the rest of the machine. So um, we've got the inventory cable now. We can connect that right there. Okay. And then over here, what we need to do is come up from this one like so. And then we'll put our inventory manager block right like that. And then what we do is we'll come out with a block gate advanced cable cluster like that. Make sure that it's pointing this direction. And then here's the fun part. You're probably going to look at me kind of weird. Okay. And, and maybe, well, maybe you won't. Um, I don't know. You let me know. But you might be wondering, what in the world are you doing here? Well, there is a slight bug in Steve's factory manager with the block gates. They don't always place right in front of them. Um, sometimes they place two blocks in front of them. Sometimes they place off to the diagonal. I I don't get it. I, it could just be that uh, missing some some things in the code there. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But um, all in all, um, it's uh, it's not not always the uh, quite what we're we're wanting. Now over here we need a redstone emitter and a redstone receiver. And if you see my mouse kind of skip, or if you see this thing have to reset the progress, my mouse is having an issue lately with, um, with the button, the main button, which is kind of tough given that Minecraft kind of requires it. But um, yeah, it registers as a double click sometimes. We've got, we've got a redstone emitter and we need a redstone receiver. Oh, I see. Okay, so the empty cluster, we're going to put redstone emitter there. But we've already got, that's a block gate. So we'll do that and that. Okay. And we'll come over here like so. Place that. That is a redstone emitter. And then off to the side, redstone receiver. You'll see how all that comes together. But what we want to do now is put in the uh, what is that the ME controller or the interface and then we'll put the chest right here and then here's the, here's the thing we're gonna put our encoded pattern right in that interface right there and then we need to come out of this like so and this part we're going to get into some vanilla redstone but we're going to be using um, the red logic repeaters. Yep. Yep. So we are dipping into a little vanilla redstone thing. And this is because we don't have a delay gate on Steve's factory manager like we would expect in, um, in uh, you know, Steve's add-ons. Yeah. So we don't have that. So no delay gate, which means that, well, we're, we're kind of stuck. So I do not want that. Oh, come on. Shift. There we go. 
So this lets you put a large amount of ticks onto that. That should be sufficient. And now what we need to do, if we manage to put, put everything away, we can put the bones, okay, and then we'll get a bucket. And we got a couple of those, and then we'll get that water tank out. Not really sure where that came from, actually, but we'll we'll just set that there for now. Grab a bucket of water, and we'll just put them on the diagonal, and like so. One more, and that should fill everything up. Good, 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 good. Okay, now we can get rid of that, and it's time to program. And I've said before, I'm not going to program this thing on camera. So what we're going to do is go off camera, I'll program the thing, then I'll bring you back and we'll take a look at what we've got. All right. You know, I really should do something about all of that spawnable space. Maybe we put some slabs there or, or we could just put a torch. How about that? There we go. Anyway, I have done a test already. And you can see right there the evidence. Yeah, we've got some awakened draconium in there. I have not hooked this up to the ME system yet. What I want to do is show you this process. So I'm going to throw all of that in. Okay, you see we did the TNT. Okay, so now the that dragon heart is awakened. And we wait a little bit. Okay, and you just heard the items go in, so that's the draconic cores, and then we've placed the draconium blocks. And it takes a little while. This is not the fastest process in the world. So you just kind of wait for it. There we go, and now we've got some awakened draconium, and that is now all automated. There we go. That's pretty cool, pretty cool indeed. What we're going to do now though is bring this up. Maybe one more, can we do that? And that means that we should be able to see right there. Yes, we can make it like that. Hopefully. And I went in there. Did it? Did it go in? Did. Oh, it's crafting. Yeah, so that's going to be the slow thing right there. It takes a while for our vibrant capacitor bank to fill that thing up. So we can just keep watching that. So we've got two, two done, two to go. So I wonder if I put some more capacitors on that, it would increase the charge rate. It might. We've certainly got enough RF to charge these things. All right. So all those items should now be in that chest. Yep. Okay. And then we wait for the redstone signal. You'll see the pulse come through. There we go. And then we just wait for it to do what it's already done. So once that clears, I'll show you the program that we've got in the meantime. So I did say that a new modded series has started up on the channel. We're going to be focusing there, but we did have to come in and finish this project right here. It's been a long term project, so certainly wanted to take care of it. And the new mod pack does not have C's factory manager because that's not been updated for 1.10.2. It's a 1.10. 10.2 pack put together by Dark Fan, Lapis Lori, Runwild, and Captain Q. And for primarily the Hypermine community, but you can download it too. It's available on the Curse Launcher, so you can go find that if you want to. We're going to be focusing there from now on for modded. So modded Mondays are going to be there. That way we, you know, can interact more with the community. And then um, you know, as with all all things modded, that tends to go away. At, after everybody's run through all the different mods. And so we might come back here to Sky Factory. Who knows, unless there's a 1.10.2 Sky Factory, but um, you know, we certainly got additional projects to, to complete here. We haven't beat the Chaos Dragon. 
our, our base is kind of a mess, but this uh, in all likelihood is going to be the final episode for a while. Okay, so um, it's not it's not really goodbye, but it is see you later. But hey, let's take a look at this this program before we go much further. So I've got two triggers set up. This one right here is a redstone, a redstone controlled. And so we're looking at a particular redstone. Um, I put that as RE, redstone emitter. But what it's going to do is it's going to read from this block that I'm pointing at right here. That's a redstone receiver. And, um, and so it's just going to check for for anything coming in. You've got four options here on a high pulse, high signal, low signal, low pulse. I want it on high pulse. That's just what I've configured in the redstone emitters. But when we get a high pulse into that redstone receiver, we're going to run the subgroup. We'll take a look at these groups in turn later. But I just want to show you the larger uh, overall program organization here. We've got another trigger here that is every five seconds. And that's going to do a couple of things. One, what we're going to do is on a condition, if we've got um, all of these items and we've got uh, we've got amounts on them. So one TNT, one dragon heart, 16 cores, four draconian blocks. So if that's met, then we'll actually start the process. If it's not, we're just not going to do anything. And then the other part of this is we'll get the output and that's just on a condition. Now, uh, let's, let's step back real quick. What I did do, and you can see over here is that we've got a bunch of variables. I've placed all of the items into variables. Not that it matters here because we don't have Steve's add-ons, which means I can't move any of these programs. So, uh, this thing is built and it's done. If I break the, inventory manager, that program goes away. That's where we're at. So anyway, let's take a look at these programs or these subgroups in turn. The Awaken is a little bit, a little bit involved. We split the flow and then first things first, we're going to grab a dragon heart and put it out into the items. Do I have that? Yeah, select it. So it's going to take a dragon heart from input and put it out right there in the rapid item valve. And then it's gonna take one TNT and place it in this block gate. And I've got it set to the north direction. In my testing world, I had it set to the east direction and it kept going to the northeast. So that's why I've got this nine by or three by three redstone here. As soon as that TNT is placed on the redstone blocks, it activates, drops down, that activates the, uh, the dragon heart. So then we move on. And what I want to do in this one is we go through a for each loop on the, let's see, show the variables on the placers. Okay. And then we're going to grab a draconian block from, from the input just on that for each drag, grab one of those um, draconian blocks there and place it into the placer. So pretty simple. Uh, the input is from the chest and the output is into the actual placer. So that's how that goes. And then, oh, after the TNT is placed, we then send the signal out to this redstone emitter. That's where that pulse comes from. It's a two, it's a pulse of length two, of a high signal, uh, 15 strength. So that's gonna send that pulse there. And we've got our timer uh, just going and and making sure that everything starts here before we actually place all of what we need to place. All right. Next order of business is the get output. We'll come in here before we go over to the redstone controlled trigger. This one is a for each loop over all of the draconium blocks. That's the block gates. And then what we do is we have a condition in there. I keep escaping. It's hard to... I think escape and it's going to go back one, but it's not. It's just going to close the thing. It's, you know, it's a common problem I've had even in Infinity Evolved. So we've got a condition only if we've got an awakened draconium in front of the block gate. Are we actually going to do this? It's not going to try and grab something that's not there. And then we take it from there, from in front of the block gate, 
and send it into the interface. Next order of business is real quick. We're going to come into here and we split the flow and we've got a couple of emitters. One of them is going to go onto all of the placer. Okay. So that, that redstone emitter that we put behind there, it's going to put out a high pulse. So, so I do emit pulse, a two tick pulse, just to make sure sometimes redstones, redstone things don't respond well to a one tick pulse. So we do a two tick pulse and then we output a high strength of 15. And, and that's going to make sure to place the, the draconian blocks. And then the next order of business is to grab all of the draconic cores and throw those out into the item valve. So we, the item valve does double duty. It's got the draconic heart and the draconic cores. And there we go. That is the awakened draconium machine. So um, anyway, can do you see why I don't do those programs on camera? What can you imagine? I mean, that took me, it took me about 20 minutes just to write that whole thing. And I was copying something that I'd already done on my creative testing world. So I was looking at screenshots, trying to remember what I had done. Um, yeah. And that was 20 minutes of doing that here. Okay. Where I'd already done it. I, um, I, can you imagine me doing that? you know, from, you know, off the, off the cuff, I, I can't, it would have taken forever and it would not have been very compelling anyway. So let's, let's be done with that. And what we will do here is grab a screenshot because that's just what you do. And we can say our project for this time around is done. So let's go back up to home and we can put away some of actually pretty much everything and there we go terminal we're going to keep and then we'll over here we'll put this back in and ladies and gentlemen that concludes this particular chapter um you know we've got yeah it's, it's about time to close up shop for this this episode um if we come over here let's take a look at what we still need to do all of the draconic stuff we need to create. Um, well, we did the charm of dislocation. Yeah. Okay. Um, we still haven't done a taming of the dragon. Yeah, but there's still plenty to do. So if we do wish to come back here, we certainly can. But um, anyway, um, I think episode 25, we're going to call it for now. I might bring back an episode 26 to do all of this stuff um, to, for making all of this. But um, yeah, I can't, I can't do that on the current episode. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, a like is always appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, think about subscribing so you're up to date with everything going on on the channel. This has been fun, but uh, we're going to be focusing on the hyper antics pack. So come join us over there. Go check that, go check out that pack, check out the the playlist so you can certainly find that on the channel and i'll put a link to it in the description box below if i remember but that's it for now thank you so much for watching and we'll see you um well we'll see you around bye bye